Welcome to our online service. We are glad that you have joined us and pray that God will meet you where you are at. We encourage you to join us in person for our weekly prayer meetings, Bible studies and Sunday services. If you would like to give your life to Christ, pray with someone or discuss a need, we would really love to hear from you. faces on this very sunny uh, Sunday morning. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. <coughs> so Lord, we thank you that you are the light that shines in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given us nature to see the glory of your beauty and to be reminded of you. Lord, we thank you that even the natural can be such a powerful reminder of who you are, to see your nature and your character and your attributes even displayed in that. And so, Father, this morning we just come before you and we want to humble ourselves again before your throne of grace and mercy and ask for your help in understanding your word, in listening to what you have to say to us. And Father, we pray this morning that you would give us joy, which is our strength. And so, Father, we pray for the help of the Holy Spirit and for your blessing over the reading of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning I've titled the message, um, The Light of Dawn. The Light of Dawn. And I wonder if you ever stop, take a moment, and just look at the sky. I wonder if you just admire God's handiwork, God's creativity. I wonder when last you took the time to look at a beautiful sunset behind the mountain range or behind an ocean and just taken in the beauty of what God has created. Or how about a sunrise? How many of you have intentionally woken up while it's still dark gone outside, taken a chair perhaps, and just sat there, waiting for the sun to rise, <coughs> watching the horizon. Well, that's the kind of feeling that I get when I think about our Lord Jesus Christ. And I think especially on this morning, we celebrate His resurrection, His rising from the dead. And so I'd like to focus on this very specific word, dawn. Dawn. And the word can have several meanings, and we're going to explore a few of those meanings as they relate to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And my hope is that you will experience for yourself through the Holy Spirit, through the words that we read, the joy, the peace, the hope that comes from the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Matthew chapter 28, and we'll be reading from verses 1 to 10. Matthew chapter 28 from verses 1 to 10. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to see the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake because an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolling aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has been raised from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember. I have told you. The woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to find the disciples, to give them the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they ran to him, held his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. And it's my hope today that as we 
think about the dawn, the specific time of day that God has created for us, that today it would be a reminder of you, of the dawn of Jesus Christ, the rising of the Son of God. And so the first definition of dawn I'd like us to consider is that dawn is the time of day before the sun rises. So there's a bit of light in the sky, but you don't see the sun yet. It's that time of day when night turns into light. The darkness turns into day. So close your eyes for a moment. Don't fall asleep here. But <laughs> uh, close your eyes for a moment and just imagine... Imagine at this moment that all you've ever seen is the darkness. You've never seen light before. <coughs> you've never seen the sunrise. And now something strange begins to happen. The black darkness that you're so used to begins to change. The color of the sky begins to transform before your very eyes. And it gets light and light. From black to a light purple. From light purple to a dark blue. Dark blue to an orangish yellow kind of color. And eventually you see that flaming ball of fire on the horizon. What do you think your heart would feel at that moment? You've never seen the sun rise before. Would there be crippling fear? Would there be curiosity? Maybe confusion? Would there be excitement? Would there be joy? Would there be awe? You can open your eyes. The Bible tells us the whole earth was in darkness before Jesus came. Isaiah 9 verses 2 to 6 read as follows. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. As warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them. The bar across their shoulders. The rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle. Every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning. It will be fuel for the fire. For to us... A child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will rest on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now this is a scripture you usually hear at Jesus' birth over Christmas time. But on this morning it rings true for us as well. There is a light that has dawned, and it's that light that we remember today, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mankind was stumbling around in the valley of the shadow of death, <coughs> blindly trying to find their way to heaven. Because of the curse that was placed on them by Adam, Adam's sin, that separated us from God's light. But God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. But it didn't end there. It doesn't end on Friday. We have the joy this morning of celebrating the risen Savior. The risen God. Through Jesus, God has made a way for us to be made right with him again. In John 1 and verses 2 to 5 we read, He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of 
all mankind. He is the sun on our horizon. Without him, <coughs> there is darkness. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And you can only imagine on that Saturday, after Jesus' death, what kind of darkness his disciples must have felt. What kind of hopelessness. What kind of despair they must have felt in their hearts. What confusion they were left in with in their hearts. How scared they must have felt. How many what if questions they must have asked. But when dawn came on that Sunday morning, and the woman told them that they had seen Jesus, there was much to celebrate. That break of dawn was one of salvation. For all mankind. Because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now something strange happened on that Friday. Tell me, is it possible for darkness to put out the light? I don't think so. <laughs> Light expels darkness. Light pushes back the darkness. Where there is light, no darkness can exist. And yet, we've sung a song today which also confirms this. The darkness tried to overcome the light. The darkness did all that it could to suppress and kill and smother the flame of life that is our Lord Jesus Christ. How do you kill a flame? You deprive it of oxygen. And that's what the darkness tried to do. They tried to deprive the body of the Lord Jesus Christ of oxygen. <coughs> in the hope that that flame would never shine again. That that light would never exist again. But I hope you're ready for some good news today, brothers and sisters. Friends. On this Sunday morning that we celebrate now, about 2,000 years ago, the light began to shine again. <coughs> then came the morning, brighter than one you've ever seen before. The morning that sealed the promise of God's salvation for mankind. His buried body began to breathe. The sun from heaven, the bright morning star, appeared as alive as ever before. He arose as conqueror over death itself, king over all. The lion arose from the grave and declared, death has no hold on me. And if we are one with Christ, if we have faith in the Messiah, then death has no hold on us. Since that day, the great light of God has shone forth to the ends of the earth, setting souls ablaze with hope and joy. The Lord Jesus, our Messiah, is the light that makes everything bright. You may have been going through the darkest of nights, but I encourage you to fix your eyes on that horizon. This morning, set your hope in the Son of God that rises. And that will be there forever more. The king declared that all our sins are washed away. That they're thrown into a sea of forgetfulness. And we can dance forever in the city of our God. Singing hallelujah. Singing glory to his name. Singing praises to the eternal one that conquered death. And his resurrection is proof that he's able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us. And so there is incredible joy for us this morning. There is incredible joy. But the dawn can also mean the beginning of an era, the beginning of a period of time. If you think of the dawn of humanity or the dawn of the 
Iron Age or the dawn of civilization. It speaks of a favorable period of time. And for us, the rising of the sun, the dawn of the Son of Man in his resurrection marks a season of peace with God. Peace with God. There is a new covenant that is given to us. There is a new era of God's love and goodwill that's given to us where we can have peace with God. His waking up from the sleep from which no man awakes is proof of the victory that he has won in the heavenly realms. And the result is that for those who repent of their sins, for those who put faith in Him, the favor of God is richly given to us. It's generously poured out on all those who were once His enemies, but are now called sons of the living God. There is salvation for all that would call upon His name. There is the beginning of a new kingdom of priests, a new nation or people of God, a new era of righteousness, of justice, of goodness, of forgiveness, of all things bright and beautiful. And it exists here. It exists with us. We are that new kingdom of God that is being established. And for every soul that gets added to our family, the kingdom of God grows. But notice it's also the dawn that separates the light from the dark. <coughs> it's the rising of the sun that distinguishes one from the other. So peace with God does not mean peace with the world or peace between light and darkness. They will always be separate. And so there are two kingdoms, of course, that of darkness where there is no dawn, where there is no sunrise, where there is no hope, where there is no light. And separating the two, there is no fence that you can sit on. Only a chasm. Only a bottomless pit. But the good news for us this morning is that Jesus opened a way. And that way is confirmed by his resurrection. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 reads as follows. For he says, in my time of favor I heard you. And then the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. This is what Jesus has accomplished for us. This is what Jesus has to offer us today. I don't know if you've ever taken note of uh, John the Baptist. Uh, his father spoke a specific prophecy, I think, over his life uh, before he was born. But in that prophecy, he also spoke about Jesus. And I want to read to you the words that he, that he said. In Luke chapter 1, and verses 78 to 79, we read the following. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. This is why Jesus was given to us. He is the rising sun that comes to us from heaven. He is the one that liberates us from darkness, that brings us from the valley of the shadow of death to peaceful streams of living water where we can find satisfaction for our souls, where we can find peace and hope. He is our guide to finding that place, to finding that green pasture with rolling hills of beauty and flowers and all things amazing. That is what our God has done for us. We are the sheep of his pasture. With his rod, he protects us from the beasts that would try and destroy our souls. And with his staff, he guides us and comforts us with his presence. Not only is there joy and peace that comes with the dawn, 
But the dawn also has another meaning. If something is to dawn on you, it means that you are beginning to understand it. You are beginning to comprehend it. You're beginning to perceive it. And so it is with our understanding of the gospel. As we understand the gospel, as we understand what Jesus has done for us, as we believe in his resurrection, there is a dawning that comes on us. There is a light that shines on us. And so when we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we experience the positive effects of his light. When the sun rises, you begin to see things a lot more clearly. When the sun rises, that bitter coldness that you experience in the dead of winter becomes warmth to your very body. And what a pleasant feeling that is when you've been freezing without a jacket just before sunrise and that sun begins to rise. You feel that incredible comfort. That is what our Jesus is for us. When a person believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, I think there's like a spiritual jolt of electricity that enters into a person's heart to jumpstart it to life. His breath comes into our very spirit and makes us alive. It's at that moment that we cross over from darkness into light because the Son of God has risen. Not only in history, but now, today, in our hearts. I know that He is living. How? In my heart. In my heart. But in order for us to truly have hope, we must believe in his life. We must believe in his death. And arguably, most importantly, we must believe in his resurrection. In 1 Corinthians in chapter 2, verse 12 to 16, the word of God says, What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given to us. <coughs> this is what we speak, not only words taught to us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept these things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And so when we begin to understand, when we begin to realize the reality of what has happened, some 2,000 years ago, we begin to have the mind of Christ. Spiritual things that were once hidden become exposed to us. And the Holy Spirit guides us into all of that truth. The things that were difficult to see now become clearer to our eyes as the Holy Spirit helps us and gives us wisdom from above. The objects that were once difficult to identify as harmless now become obvious to us when the light of God dawns on our hearts and our souls. When a person thinks of the dawn or sees the dawn, you have a very real sense of hope. Nobody thinks, oh, the sun's just teasing us. It's not really going to rise today. You can be sure that if there's light on the horizon, when the darkness starts to turn into light, the sun will rise. It is a guarantee. And it's that guarantee that God has given us in the light of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ as well. His resurrection is proof that we will one day be resurrected as well. That he's coming again to fetch us. It's proof that he meant what he said when he said he's going to prepare a place for us. 
But notice, in order to see the sun, you need to be looking in the right direction. You can't be looking west or north or south in order to see the sunrise. It rises in the east, in a very specific place. And notice that you can't see the cloud rise. I mean, the, the sun rising so well if there's clouds or fog or anything blocking your view. And so for us, we learn that lesson as well. In order for us to see the sun rising, in order for us to accept it, we need to be looking in the right direction. We need to be looking in the Word of God. This is where we find faith. This is where we find truth. And the sin that so easily blocks our view of the sun, that blocks the glory of the sun. Just this morning we were driving on the way to church and the sun was in our eyes. <laughs> you know, it kind of blinds you. <laughs> you can't see anything when you're looking at that sun. Um, and so it is with us. With us as well. You want to be blinded by that light. You don't want to see the disgusting things of this world, believe me. <laughs> you don't want to have your eyes fixed on the filth, on the things that are going to bring you down, on the things that are going to make you feel despair and hopeless. No. You want to have your eyes on the sun, so that the things of this world can grow strangely dim. That is where you want to fix your focus not just today, not just on the day where we celebrate His resurrection, but for all your days. Don't you want to feel that warmth in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit? Don't you want to be able to see the danger that lies ahead? This is the kind of hope that only God can give. The guarantee of eternal life. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1 to 3 reads as follows as well. Speaking about the sunrise and the dawn. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but He will heal us. He has injured us, but He will bind up our wounds. After two days, He will revive us. On the third day, He will restore us that we may live in His presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. That's the kind of refreshing that God offers to us. It may be night, it may be dark, but wait on the Lord and you will find your strength. You will soar on wings like eagles. You will be refreshed by the winter rains, by the soothing spring rains. He will give us life. Paul speaks of the significance, and we'll close with this scripture. Paul speaks of the significance of the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 13 to 20. And I think it's an important verse for us to read and to remember in this time as we celebrate the resurrection. He says, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised... Our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we have been found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that He raised Christ from the dead. But He did not raise Him, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And here's the important part. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Do you hear that? If Christ is not raised, you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only in this life we have hope in Christ, 
We are all people are most to be pitied. But there's good news today, brothers and sisters. We have the faithful witnesses that wrote the scriptures. And the truth of God, the Spirit of God testifies to the truth inside of us. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Amen. <clears throat> he is risen. He is risen indeed. Without the resurrection, our faith is futile. We are lost forever. But we can take great joy today, knowing in our hearts that we are not lost if we have faith in the Son of God. So set your eyes on the rising sun. Wait for His appearing. There's a little bit of light that we see now mixed with maybe a tiny bit of darkness still. But when have you ever seen light in the sky and not seen the sun rise? As surely as the sun rises each morning, Jesus will come again. He'll come on the clouds with glory, with, gl with great splendor, and I'm sure we'll be blinded by that glorious light, just as probably more than, than we are at the sun at the moment. And so we can boldly believe this gospel, because it is true. And we can boldly preach this gospel. We can take comfort knowing that those who have fallen asleep in Christ are not lost. They're held in the arms of This is the peace that we have because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where else can you find this kind of peace? Where else can you have a guarantee of eternal blessings after you die? Nowhere. <clears throat> May the light of Christ and the power of His resurrection dawn in all its fullness and glory in your hearts as you sit here and as you leave this place and for all the days of your life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the joy that we have this morning of celebrating your resurrection. We thank you, Lord, for the peace that you've given us as a result of the promise that is conferred by your resurrection. And Lord, we thank you that there's so much hope for us today. Not in what we have done or what we could do, but only because of what your Son, Jesus Christ, has done for us. And so I pray, help us to rest in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to live in the light of the door of the new covenant which is given to us. Help us, O oh Lord, not to be fond of the darkness, not to hide in our sins. But Lord, may you give us boldness and courage to repent. May you give us the strength to turn to you, the God of our salvation, to receive your life, which is given for us. So, Father, we pray for your blessing over us as we enjoy this building. We pray for your blessing over us as we enjoy a time of fellowship together. And we pray, Lord, that as we look at the sky, as we look at the sun today, we would be reminded of what you've done for us, what you've achieved for us. And so we ask for your help to remember this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. We pray that you were blessed by this online service. Please take time to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.